we're gonna do something cool today. At least I I hope it's cool. Um, it's uh, we're gonna look at binds and half binds. I gave a little preview of the relax. Okay, come here. Um, last week in class, and don't be scared. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it work for everybody uh, in a cool way. So. But to start, I want to just talk about the full moon last night because it was it was a uh, full pink moon, and I wrote this down to share with you guys. Um, so this full moon is about fertility and exuberance. It is about faith in the future and the anticipation of abundance. This is a time to set new things in motion or make new commitments. It is a time to find the courage and the trust to take those first steps into a new path. So I really like that. So I just want to read that with you guys uh, as a little. And the new moon holds power, we know, uh, for a few days, right? So even if you don't, uh, you miss it on the actual day of, which was last night, you can still uh, kind of harness that power to set those intentions and bring all that to uh fruition. So still time today to set that intention of abundance, celebrating new things, and just kind of venturing out into the new. Uh, we were just kind of talking about exactly that before class. So we have the cards to shuffle. Probably want to grab some blocks for today as part of that fine, just to have them handy to help out. Um, and otherwise, we should be good. So let's uh, let's jump in. Let's see what the cards have for us this morning. I am willing to see the same awareness with others. Oh, sorry. I am willing to see the sameness with others. This opens my awareness to oneness. Definitely reading that again in a second. And I'll show you the card. Kind of perfect for spring with all those blooms. I don't know why it's such a tongue twister, but it was. All right. So we us start seated today. That works. So let's settle in. Close the eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and then side out the mouth. And pushing out all that stale air from the belly. Maybe take one more of those if you need it. Nice deep cleansing breath. And just letting the eyes close, the hands come to rest in the lap. Finding that tall spine. And just start to settle in here. Putting aside all the stuff for the day. We'll just take these next few minutes just for the mat, just for you. And I'll read our card one more time. I am willing to see the sameness with others. This opens my awareness to oneness. I am willing to see the sameness with others. This opens my awareness oneness. We forget we're all connected. That's all the same. We all have stuff. We get caught up with our own stuff. We make it more important than everybody else's. Just what happens. So 
but it's important to remember at the end of the day that we're not above, right? That we're all the same. That we all bring a pile of good and a pile of bad. Every table we show up to. And if we remember that, we start to kind of lead with things like passion and empathy. And we can leave behind a lot of like, anger, frustration. And I think the key here becomes discernment because it's very easy to be like, to go too far to one side or the other, right? To think that this means we're gonna let everybody just walk all over us. Like, oh, it's okay because we all have problems. No, that's not what it means. Right, when we accept that other people face challenges, that we're all the same, we're not excusing poor behavior, right? There still needs to be that level of discernment. Does it mean we let people walk all over us or treat us poorly? You can still stand up for yourself. But it's compassion, it's empathy. Instead of yelling, things become a conversation, right? Instead of getting frustrated and acting out of anger, maybe now we lead from compassion and we have a meaningful communication about things in life. Because we understand, hey, I know you've got stuff, I've got stuff, but that wasn't cool. It changes things. We could use some of that. <laughs> The more of us that remember, and the more often we remember, the more we are willing to see the sameness in others, the more it opens our awareness to that oneness, brings that compassion. But remember discernment. It's okay to have boundaries. It's not a bad word. where yoga comes in and helps us find balance between all of these crazy big things that are very hard to balance. Jump on into our practice on your next inhale. Reach those arms up overhead. Nice full body stretch. Maybe let the head drop back. Gaze come up towards the sky. Really reach. Give even a little more than you think you can. And then on your next exhale, let those arms flow back down to the earth. Coming to land behind you, interlace the fingers, pressing the palms away, opening the heart, start to stretch those shoulders a little bit. I really want to open up the upper body today. Releasing the arms, letting them come back to your lap. You can just shake those shoulders out a little bit, find some movement, just kind of release that little bit of tension that we might have built. Is that we really want to open the upper body, right? We're going to work on. Um, exploring with a bind in our extended side angle pose. So um, if you're up on a block or something, you can stay, we're gonna do some bends and some twists and just kind of work on saying good morning to this area. So from your nice tall seat, let's take an inhale, send both arms up to the sky. And we'll start with our twist on an exhale coming to the right, right hand comes behind us. You can kind of use that left arm on that right leg. Keep pressing that left hip away down, right? We don't want to kind of let everything roll up with us, keeping the twist in the spine. Maybe you even take the gaze over that right shoulder that's going to kind of draw it up into the neck and the upper back. I'm just breathing into this. Next inhale, we'll bring it back to neutral, releasing the twist. And those arms up one more time. 
and exhale will come up over to the left this time. So this time we're pressing that right hip down. We keep the twist of the spine. Maybe take the gaze over that left shoulder. Find your breath. You know, we're twist, we can the inhale, it's kind of blowing us up, creating some space. And then on the exhale, we get to kind of ring out into that twist a little bit. Like when you ring out like water from a towel. Maybe that's kind of how you can think of the body in a twist. Exhale, the breath is that twist releasing the water. Next in, I'll bring it back to neutral. Shake it out if you need to. We'll work on some bends. So coming back to your neutral spine as you're ready. We're gonna, we do you wanna go first? It doesn't matter. Left hand comes down, right hand comes high, reach tall. On an exhale, melt to the left. So kind of bending into that left elbow, reaching those right fingers, pressing the right hip down. So we get like that push and pull, right? Pressing the hip away as we reach the fingers away. And now this kind of feels a little familiar, right? We're kind of opening up the body just like we are in our extended side angle pose. I want you to think about that left shoulder coming under, right shoulder coming back of keeping that alignment. So your back is against the wall here, right? Theoretically. One last breath. Next inhale, coming back up through neutral. Right hand's gonna come down as we send that left arm up high. Same thing, reach, create some space here. We wanna open up the side body. And then as we exhale into it, really stretching, pressing that left hip away, reaching the left fingers. It is wherever you feel sensation. So it doesn't have to be super, super deep, no right or wrong. Just you feel that opening through the side body, breathing into that left side. One more breath here. And inhale, we'll come up, like down. Same thing, keep shaking out those shoulders a little bit as we open up this part of the body. And we're gonna make our way into tabletop. As you come into your tabletop, take a few cat cows, find some movement, right? It doesn't have to be a cat cow, whatever feels good for you here. Maybe just some side stretches and some side bends. Something totally your own, right? Whatever helps you just kind of open and wake things up here, finding that movement. One more round of breath. And then we'll come back to that neutral flat back. And we just want to keep working on waking up the upper body here. So we're going to do one last round of twists before we jump into our practice. So from here, we're going to take an inhale, send that right arm high. And on the exhale, coming down, sweep that right arm right behind the left wrist, reaching off to the left side. Thing lifted in the shoulder. One more time, inhale, sweep the arm up. Exhale, coming down, crossing behind the left wrist, reaching through. And on the inhale, coming back to neutral. And then we'll move through that flow on the left side too. So moving with your breath here. Inhale, sweep the left arm up to the sky. Pausing for a breath. And then on an exhale, we'll come down, coming right behind the right wrist, reaching off to the right. Moving, thread the needle. Same thing, pausing before inhaling up. Exhale down. We're coming back to neutral. From here, we're going to head into down dog, wake up those legs. So moving nice and slow, we haven't done much with that lower body. Slide the hands forward, come up on the toes. 
Inhale, press those hips high. Take your time, take some movement here, pedal out those legs. And then when you feel ready for it, start to settle into your dog, pressing those heels down towards the earth, pressing into all four corners of the palms, chest back towards the thighs. You want to wake up the whole body, so we'll hang here for a breath or two more. <coughs> and saying hello to all those muscles. Next, inhale, put a bend in those knees. Walk your way to the top of the mat. We'll meet in a forward fold. Inhale, sweep those arms to the sky. And exhale, pray your heart. Are we just closing the eyes for a moment here? Coming back to your breath. Relax the hands down to your sides. Slowly float open the eyes. And here we are. All right, so what's a bind? So we're gonna do nice little flow with our uh, kind of ending with our extended side angle pose. Now you do not have to do this bind, right? We always talk at the end of the month about fun ways to keep exploring with our pose and things we can do. So when we look at some of those crazy yoga poses where they're all tangled up, like how did they get there? If there's a lot of steps to get there. And we can learn baby steps as we go. So our extended side angle pose is going to be a foundational pose for some of those really crazy twisted up poses that we see if we start to build and add on it. And binds is a way that we can do that. And it's also just a different way to practice the, boat, the pose. If you tend to have really tight shoulders, uh, you know, maybe you, you, you sit at a desk, right? And you're hunched over a lot. Binds might be some way to something to introduce into your practice to help you kind of open, right? And always combat that. It's going to make this upper body a focus for you. So just like we did our warm up, more focused on that. You're going to, you're going to put your practice more in that realm, right? So there's a lot of different reasons and ways to practice this, but those are a couple. So before we jump into our flow, what does it look like? So just so you have an idea. So we can do, we're going to look at a half bind. And, and a full bind and an extended side angle today. So I'm gonna turn around now and show you what that looks like so you guys can see it. This way, as we move through our flow, if you wanna try it, you can. So when we get into our extended side angle pose, all right, we look like this. Hopefully you can hear me okay still. To do the half bind, all we're gonna do is take our top arm and bring it behind our back. So you're just starting to reach around for the front of the body. If we want to do the full bind, we're going to take this front arm and reach back for our fingers. We want to come underneath the front of the thigh, reaching up and over, grabbing for that hand. Now this is why you see we want to open up this area. So that is not easy to get into. I don't expect anybody to be touching their fingers right off the bat. I certainly did it the first time I did, right? This is a version that we're familiar of. That's kind of like a bind, right? We used to do that in like stretching for gym class and sports and stuff. So we've seen these kind of things before where we're touching fingers. So it's hard, it takes a long time to get there. Maybe all you're gonna do is that half bind where you're bringing the arm behind the back. So don't, force anything, I just want you to see it, right? So we can expose ourselves to new things. So let's jump in, do our little flow, no pressure, practice whatever version of extended side angle you've been practicing or wanna practice today. Just options for you guys, okay? So grab your blocks if you're using them. They might be helpful today. 
to balance on a block. If you want to try practicing bringing that arm around, or maybe you want to practice against the wall. So you don't have to worry about falling over. This is going to change your balance quite a bit, right? So set yourself up and we'll find our way to Tadasana. Now we're just going to move through a little flow, both sides. End with the child's pose and wrap up class today. So as you make your way into Tadasana, we're setting that intention, right? We're turning on the body, getting ready for our practice. We know where we're going. Moving down through those feet, lifting up through everything else. On an inhale, sweep those arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step back, left foot, find your lunge. Think about where we're going with the legs. We want to set up our foundation here. So pressing down to that front foot. Let's take one last twist. Plant the left hand. Inhale that right arm open high to the sky. Exhale, top arm comes down. Now we're going to drop that back heel. Make warrior two. Take an inhale, lift the top body, cartwheeling the arms open, coming in towards two. Inhale, flip the front palm, reverse your warrior, tilt it back, reaching high. Straighten that front leg, let's get a little relief in that knee, in that quad. And then inhale, bring the top body back up. And let's set up for like I said, whatever version you're practicing. So from here, we're going to bring our bend back in our knee. Check in with that knee. Make sure you can see that big toe. Now, wherever your arms are going to come, maybe you're coming to rest on the knee with the elbow. Maybe that back arm is on the hip. Okay. Maybe we're on a block with the front arm. Maybe you want to try for the half bind. No, you're just going to take the, the arm. Bring the forearm to rest on the low back. And that's your half line. Use this block to help balance you. Remember to send that left shoulder back. We'll bring that torso to the side. Last breath here. Inhale, rise up straight the front leg as you go. One more reverse warrior. Well, reverse triangle. And how rise up. All right, wheel those arms down to frame the front foot as you pop up the back heel. And how that back foot up to meet the front, half lift. Exhale, fold. And how sweep those arms to the sky. And exhale, dive it right back down the middle. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, full step back, right leg, find your lunge. Right, pressing down in all four corners that foot. When your legs are steady, plant that right hand. Inhale, left arm open high. Breathing. And have to hold the breath here. Next, exhale, top arm comes down. Dropping the back heel. Pressing into that pinky edge of the back foot. As you inhale, lift the top body, partly the arms into warrior two. And now flip the front palm, reverse your warrior, tilt it back. If you need to straighten the front knee here, you can. If you want to challenge yourself, you can stay. Feel these foot. Next, inhale, coming back to warrior two. If you need to come back into that bend in the front knee, you can. Setting yourself back up. 
Check in with that alignment with the legs before we go any further. And then find your extended side angle. So same thing. Hand on the knee. Maybe you're on the ground. Your block, wherever. Your front arm is likely not going to change, right? You're either going to be on the block, knee, wherever. It's that back arm that's going to change today if you want to play around with the bind. So you can be on the hip. You can be traditional up and over. Or if you want to bring it behind the back, trying for that half bind, you can go for that. Wherever you're at today. Stay with the breath here. Remember to keep that left shoulder lifted. Try not to collapse into the ear. Right? Last breath. Next, in, I'll straighten that front leg as you go, reverse triangle, reach that left arm. Inhale, back to neutral. Cartwheeling the arms down to frame the front foot as we pop up the back heel. Inhale, up to meet the front half lift. Find a little length through that spine here. Really pulling the crown forward. Exhale, let it go, forward fold. And from here, plant the hands, come down to the knees. Let's grab a child's pose before we let ourselves off the mat. Rocking the forehead and the hands down. Just giving yourself kind of like a, a mini shavasana. So if it's more comfortable to be upright or use a block or a prop, whatever you need, think mini shavasana is your goal here. So whatever gets you there. Heck, roll over, lay down for a minute if that makes you happy and comfortable. Let's figure a child's pose might feel nice for the leg. Just hang here for one or two more breaths. Just giving the body a couple moments of pause where we jump up off the mat and back into our day. Nice to take those moments to settle, let our body kind of absorb what just happened. Moving gently, you can press yourself back up to seated. Just letting your hands come to fall in your lap. However you're comfortable. Keeping the eyes closed here for a moment. Thanking yourself for practicing today. Or journeying with this pose this month. A few days left. It's not over yet. I right, thank you for joining me this morning. To close, we'll bring our hands to prayer. Touching down first at the third eye for kind thoughts. And prayer touches at the lips for loving words. Finally, coming to rest at the heart for an open heart. The light in me honors the same divine light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Thanks for hanging with me this morning. You should be able to.